as leaders, almost all of us feel like we have too much to do, a lot of pressure, deadlines, decisions, and stress. While we do have real responsibilities as leaders, we often waste way more time on things that don't really move us toward our goals and objectives. So in this episode, we're talking about simplifying your life in leadership and what I call cut the slack, part two. This is the Craig Groeschel Leadership Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Craig Rochelle Leadership Podcast. Thank you for taking a little bit of time to uh, share in our leadership community and to invest in your leadership. It really, really matters because we believe that everyone wins when the leader gets better. If this is your first time to join us, uh, let me tell you what we do. We release a new leadership teaching on the first Thursday of every month. In fact, I know a lot of you get together with your team members or with leaders from your community. And if you would like notes to go along with this, maybe to help you read as you listen, just email us. You can go to life.church slash leadership podcast, and we'll send you the notes uh, each time we release a new episode. I do want to say thank you. I see a lot of you sharing on social media and it really means a lot to me. I'm gonna work as hard as I can to bring content that adds value to your leadership. And anytime you invite others into our leadership community, I just wanna say thank you. Also, if you haven't rated this content or reviewed it wherever you consume it, um, and you wouldn't mind doing that for me, it would mean a lot to me. It actually helps increase the exposure. And so if you could rate, review, or subscribe to this, it'll come to you on the first Thursday of each month. Let's dive into new content in this episode. And here's something that I know is true for almost all of you. As leaders, um, almost all of us, we feel overwhelmed at times. We feel like we have too much to do um, and not enough hours in the day. We believe that we're busy and we often are, but at the same time, we have no idea how much slack that we have in our schedule. If you missed the last episode, what is slack? Webster defines slack this way. Webster says slack is sluggishness or lack of energy characterized by slowness, not tight or taut, blowing or flowing at low speed. And again, I just love that phrase, some are blowing or flowing at low speed. I define slack this way. Slack is any activity that absorbs resources but creates little or no value. Anything that we do that takes time or energy but doesn't move the needles toward our objectives. You, just like everybody else, you likely have an enormous amount of slack in your work rhythms and you may not even know it. We often see it in others, but we don't see it in ourselves. In fact, you may work with team members. You, you see them spending hours scrolling on Instagram, shopping online or playing games at their desk, chatting with coworkers for long extended breaks, or they say, I don't have time, but every night they're watching another episode of The off Office online or whatever the case would be. What if, and here's a question that may apply to your leadership. What if you don't have too much to do, but you actually have too much slack? What if we're not really overwhelmed as much as we're wasting time in places that don't really matter? Now, if you haven't listened to the last episode, I would really encourage you to hit pause on this one, go pick up the last episode, part one first, and then we'll dive into this content. Let me tell you what we're gonna do in this one. Um, we're gonna talk about simplifying your own life in leadership. How do we cut the slack personally? Um, in this episode, I'll recommend four books that have helped shape this content, and they're some of my favorites um, throughout the years on this subject. I like the book by David Allen. It's an oldie but a goodie uh, called Getting Things Done. Also, Tim Ferriss, he wrote it years ago, and part of it's crazy, but part of it's crazy good. Uh, the four-hour work week is very, very helpful. Cal Newport uh, wrote Deep Work, which I enjoyed, and of course, Covey, um, Habits of Highly Effective People. Let's talk about some principles, five principles for your own life. Simplify your own life in leadership. Five things. Number one, what we're gonna do is start with your not-to-do list. Start with your not-to-do list. Number two, get your to-do list out of your head. Number three, break your to-do list into actionable steps. Number four, prioritize what's most important. And number five, take the next step. Start with your not-to-do list. Get your to-do list out of your head. Break it down into smaller actionable steps. Prioritize and take the next step. Let's break it down, thought number one. Start with what I call your not-to-do list, not-to-do list. Uh, here's the bottom line. In your early years of leadership, let's say you're just getting started out, you have to say yes to a lot of opportunities. 
You have to do that to grow in your leadership, to earn um, credibility and to build trust and such. But as you mature, and this is important, you don't grow with your yeses, you grow with your noes. Let me say it again. As you mature, you don't grow with your yeses, you grow with your noes. So to become better, to become more effective, more focused, what do you want to do? Here's what you want to do. You want to ruthlessly eliminate all time-wasting, non-productive, life-taking, soul-draining distractions. I want to say it again just because I like that sentence. You're going to ruthlessly eliminate all time-wasting, non-productive, life-taking, soul-draining distractions. In fact, the Harvard Business Review reported on a survey by the Covey Center for Leadership that looked at over 400 executives, business owners, and entrepreneurs. So this is likely some of the best of the best. And we're gonna assume that the best of the best are probably better at time management. But looking at the best of the best, they found that 6.8 hours these leaders on average would spend on activities that could have been easily delegated in any given week, 6.8 hours. Uh, In any given week, they spend 3.9 hours in escapist mental breaks streaming YouTube or social media or the equivalent. They spend over three hours, 3.4 hours on non-essential email. They spend 3.6 hours handling low value, non-essential requests or putting out fires that could be handled by others. They actually listed more that I'm not including here, but these are the best of the best. And here's what the survey found, 400 executives, business owners and entrepreneurs. The average leader was wasting about 21.8 hours a week on tasks that don't add real value. Stop for a minute and let that sink in. Over 20 hours a week of slack on things that don't matter. I tell my kids all the time this, you'll never do big things when you're distracted by small things. You could be in your own leadership distracted by social media, uh, unnecessary text, emails that waste your time, browsing, chatting with coworkers, and et cetera. Uh, If I were doing this in a big talk, I would say, starve your distractions and feed your focus. And I wanna say it here relationally, starve them, remove the distractions and feed your focus. Starve distractions, feed your focus. Here's what we have to understand. Whenever you have what somebody else calls an opportunity, hey, this is a great opportunity for you. If it doesn't hit your end goal, What you want to learn is the art of politely declining. And this is so, so important. And let's just talk about how to say no. Someone asks you to do something, here's an opportunity. It may even be good, but it's not in your sweet sweet spot. What you're going to do is you're simply going to smile and you're going to decline. Always smile and just say something like, I thank you, but this isn't going to work for me. That's it. All you have to do is say no. And this is so important. You don't have to give a reason. No is a complete sentence. Just no, thank you for offering, but I'm not gonna do this. I can't do this. This is not a good time for me. This isn't something good for me. This is so important. There are a few things as stupid as doing something well that shouldn't be done. You're a leader. Your time is more valuable than that. What are you gonna do? Ruthlessly eliminate all time-wasting, non-productive, life-taking, social-draining distractions. Number one is we're gonna start with our not-to-do list. I'm not doing these things. We're going to say no. Number two, we're going to get your to-do list out of your head. In fact, uh, this is all over Alan's book, Getting Things Done. And he talks about this. He talks about creating a consistent system to record everything that you need to do. And this is just me telling you, um, doesn't matter how uh, you track your to-do list, I would suggest that you do it the same way. It could be on a notepad, on your phone. It could be on Evernote. It could be OneNote. It could be Apple Notes. You could write on your hand as long as you have a big hand and don't wash it, okay? Write everything down. What you're doing is you're clearing your mind. And this is important. By recording it, you're actually giving yourself permission not to think about it until it's time to do it. You're taking it out of your mind. It's recorded. This is recorded to do later, but it doesn't need to take up mental space right now. Then number three, what we're going to do is we're going to break each item into small, actionable steps. I cannot overstate how important this is. What what do we know? One of the biggest forms of slack manifests itself in either inaction or indecisiveness. We're overwhelmed, and so we don't do anything, 
or we can't make a decision, so we put things on pause. What do we do? We have a big project that overwhelms us. Oh my gosh, where do I start? Where do I start? So we procrastinate and we end up with inaction. Or we've got a complicated decision to make. There's a lot of moving parts. We're not sure what to do, so we procrastinate and suddenly we have indecision. Look for all the different areas where you are not acting or not deciding. Why does this matter? Procrastination is the thief of time. It is slack. So instead of putting down on your to-do list the big project, we're going to simplify and simply put down the next step. I like what Confucius said. He said, the man who moves a big mountain starts by carrying away small stones. In other words, let's say you need to finish a book that you've been writing. You're overwhelmed, you're paralyzed, so you're procrastinating and you've got slack. What you want to do is simply put down the next step. It might be the next step, list the big eight themes you're going to write about, or it might be write 1,000 words today, or whatever. The small step is going to feel doable. It's going to keep the project moving. Maybe you might say, I need to reorganize my staff. Oh my gosh, that's such a big project. Where, where do I start? Well, maybe the next step is to set a time to meet with your key leaders. That's doable, whatever it is. For me, um, writing a leadership podcast, believe it or not, it actually takes quite a bit of time to try to keep it simple and focused. People say like, did you like write that in 20 minutes? Like, no, I did not. The thought of writing a new podcast at time can feel overwhelming. So what I do is I break it into smaller steps. Mm -hmm. Step one might be select a theme. That's doable. Then step two, my next thing on the to-do list becomes research the theme. That's doable. Then outline the content. That's doable. Then edit it for flow. That's doable. Then test the content on others to see is it helpful, what's not helpful. That's doable. Then try to edit it down to 20 minutes. That's harder than it looks. Then polish the content so it flows. Then record it. These are small step-by-step -step processes that lead to what you see today. The whole process feels overwhelming, but step-by-step-by-step, -step -step, we're going to do it every month. First Thursday of the month is coming your way, 20 minutes or so. I like what Martin Luther King said. He said, you don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. Number one, start with your not to-do list. You're gonna grow with your nose. Don't do everything. You need to stop doing some things that are really wasting your time. Number two, get your to-do list out of your head. Number three, break each item into small, actionable steps. Number four, it's simple, but prioritize what you do next. Prioritize what's the most important, what really has the highest return on your time. Stephen Covey talks a lot about prioritizing, and he says over and over again, one of the most important principles is choosing the important over the urgent. Don't let the loud, don't let what everyone else says crowd you out of doing what really moves the needle in your leadership. Some examples. Calming an angry customer. She's throwing a fit. That's urgent. But what's important, building systems to keep customers from getting angry, that is important. Getting your car repaired, that's urgent, but changing the oil so it doesn't need to be repaired later, that's actually important. Getting help whenever you're sick, that's urgent. But taking care of yourself so you don't get sick, that's important. Make sure you don't let the urgent crowd out the important. This is important. If you do the important, you won't have as many things that are urgent. Let me say it again. If you do what's important, you'll eliminate many things later on that feel urgent. Choose important over urgent. Covey, he drills this into your head and he says this, don't just prioritize what's on your schedule. Schedule your priorities. Don't just prioritize, hey, I gotta do all these things, but put what matters to you on your schedule, put those things on there first. If you feel frustrated, you're often overwhelmed, you feel unfulfilled, you're dissatisfied right now, you're discouraged. Here's what I can bet is true in your life. I'm, I'm almost assure you that your slack is crowding out your values. All the time wasters are getting in the way of the things that you really value. In fact, I've said this for years, the difference between the values you embrace and how you spend your time, that equals the frustration that you feel. Some of you, you value time with your family, or you value making a difference, or you value growing, but all these other things have crowded out those things that you value, and that's why you're so frustrated, because you're not prioritizing your time around your values. What do we do? We're gonna start with a not-to-do list. 
We're going to get it out of our head and record it somewhere. We're going to break it down into small, actionable steps. We're going to prioritize. And then number five, we're going to take the next step. Do the next right thing. What have you done in your leadership to simplify if we're at this point? Well, you've eliminated what's not important. Your life is too valuable and your calling is too great to waste it on things that don't matter. You're eliminating. I'm not doing that. I'm saying no. You've organized what is. Here it is. It's recorded. These things really matter. Then you've broken what you want to do into prioritized, achievable steps. This comes next. So what do you do? You take the next step. What are you doing when you live this out? Well, you're cutting the slack. You're cutting the time when nothing is done. What does the small step do? The small step keeps the project moving. After all, what is success? I've always told my kids this. Success is the accumulation of consistent small steps in the right direction. Day in, day out, doing the small things, the right things, being faithful, being obedient, staying on task, staying focused, done consistently over time leads to the desired results. I like what Tim Ferriss says in the four-hour work week. He says this, three times a day at scheduled times, maybe at nine, maybe at noon, maybe at three, whatever it would be for you, three times a day at scheduled times, ask yourself, am I being productive or just active? Am I doing what really matters or am I just busy? Then he says, ask yourself, am I inventing things to do to avoid the important? Hmm, some of you think this will hit close to home. You're just finding busy work to keep you from doing what's really, really important. Don't confuse activity with progress. Don't just be busy. Be busy doing what matters. Take the next right step. Now, one of the biggest things to remember about cutting your own personal slack, about simplifying your life in leadership, is what's known as Parkinson's Law. If you're not familiar with Parkinson's law, I love this. Parkinson's law states that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. Whatever amount of time you have, that's how long it's gonna take to get the project done. If something, if you have a month to get a project done, it'll be done in a month. If that same project must be done in 10 days, guess what? You're very likely to get it done in 10 days. Work expands to the amount of time allocated to get the project done. So. To cut the slack, to simplify your life in leadership, you might do what I do. I create artificial deadlines. What is an artificial deadline? It's a deadline that's artificial. It's a deadline that's not real. It's not real, but I treat it as if it's real. For example, if I gave you six months to do a project, here's what you would probably do. You'd wait three weeks before you do anything thinking about it. Then you'd form a committee, you'd do some research, you'd take proposals, you'd debate, you'd meet, you'd start, you'd stall. Uh, The last two weeks, what would you do? You'd cram and get it all done. What if instead you created an artificial deadline and you said, we've only got two weeks to do this project? If you did that on the very same project, you'd be working on it today. You would have a plan by first thing in the morning. You'd be working the plan by the middle of the day tomorrow. It'd be done in two weeks, and chances are it might be better than if it took you six months to do it. It's an artificial deadline. You see this happen. In fact, you do it all the time if you have a short work week. In other words, if next week there's a holiday, and so you're not working for two days, or you have a vacation coming up, guess what you do? You magically somehow get all your work done in three days because there's a deadline, and suddenly you become more efficient. In fact, Tim Ferriss says in his book, he says, the end product of a shorter deadline is almost inevitably of equal or higher quality due to greater focus. Think about that and let it sit in. The end product, what you do and produce in a shorter amount of time is almost always of equal or higher quality because you're focused, because there's intensity bringing it to you. So how do you stay focused? Above all else, do what James Clear um, recommends in his book on habits. He says, start with the who before you even think about the do. Start with the who. In other words, who do you wanna be? Who do you wanna be as a leader? Who do you wanna be as a person? This is really important because you are the leader and you're not gonna let other people dictate your destiny. That's why you're willing to say no, you will say no. When you know who you wanna become, you'll know what you should be doing and you'll know what you will not do. Then you're gonna get the list out of your head. You're gonna put it into actionable steps. I can do this, this is doable. You're gonna prioritize it and you're simply going to take the next step. 
day in, day out, consistently over time. And then one day, months from now, years from now, people say, oh my gosh, you're an overnight success. And you'll know, no, 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 no. That's not the real story. The real story is I've been faithful. Small step after small step in the same direction over time. Little acts of faithfulness result in big influence and impact over time. You can do it. We've all got so much slack. The best of the best leaders waste 20 hours a week, and we're probably not the best of the best. So guess what? If we get serious about this, we can cut some slack, and we can really make a real difference. Questions for reflection? I've got three. Number one, who do you want to become? Who do you want to become? Notice I didn't ask, what do you want to have? Where do you want to live? How much money do you want to make? Let's start with the who. Who, start with the who, who before do. Question number two, based on who you want to become, what are you doing now that you need to stop doing? And what are you not doing that you need to start doing? Really important, based on who you want to become, what do you need to stop doing, and what do you need to start doing? And then number three, you ready for it? What's your next step? There it is. Take it. This is who I want to become. I want to be a great dad. I want to be a positive influence. I want, I want to be a leader people love to follow. Based on who I want to become, I'm going to stop doing this because it's a time waster. I'm going to start doing this because it helps me become who I want to become. I'm going to put it down in small, actionable steps, and I'm going to take the next step. I want to encourage you to take the next step and believe that you can do more, you can influence more, you can make a bigger difference than you're even making now because everyone wins when the leader gets better. Thank you for being a part of our community. I look forward to uh, seeing you on the next first Thursday of the month unless we drop a bonus episode. Um, have confidence you're where you are because you're gifted and you're called to make a difference there. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know it all. Bring yourself you have a lot to offer. Remember, be yourself because people would rather follow a leader who's always real than one who's always right. Thank you for joining us at the Craig Rochelle Leadership Podcast. If you want to go even deeper into this episode and get the leadership guide or show notes, you can go to life.church slash leadership podcast. You can also sign up to have that information delivered straight to your inbox every month. In the meantime, you can subscribe to this podcast rate and review it on iTunes, and share with your friends on social media. Once again, thank you for joining us at the Craig Rochelle Leadership Podcast.